Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, in today's class, we are going to talk about Van Dyck's CDA model of us and them, or the model of self versus other. Fine, us versus them, or self versus others. Fine. Uh, this is the major concern of today's lecture. Fine. But before that, let me provide you a very brief overview of where this model has actually come from. Fine. The, uh, this model, the major topic that has been recorded in another video, in this short video, I'm just going to provide you a background of this model of this theory. Fine. So basically, this model has come from Van Dyck's socio-cognitive model of critical discourse analysis. Fine. Socio is from socio uh, society and cognitive is from cognition from uh, the, the mental structure of human being. Fine. So uh, this is where the model of us in, and them has actually come from. Now let me provide you a very brief overview of uh, this background. Okay. Uh, this model, socio-cognitive model. And then the next, uh, the main point, the main uh, discussion that is in the next video fine so uh, according to Van Dyck uh, we have textual structures like we use text fine uh, discourse we produce discourse then we have social structures various structures of society fine and we have cognitive structures means the structures of human mind the various structures of human mind so according to Van Dyck the relationship between the link between textual structures and uh, social structures this link is mediated by it is created by it is controlled by the cognitive structures of human being fine the human cognition simply so we produce discourse in society fine in our uh, like the daily text and talk and we live in society we have got certain social structures certain power relations in society now this relationship between these two things these two it is mediated by it is controlled by the human mind by the cognitive structures of human mind fine now how are these things controlled by the human mind and what is meant by the human mind let's talk about them very briefly uh, according to the socio-cognitive model of Van Dyck human mind or cognition is of two types the first one is the personal cognition while the second one is the social cognition fine so the personal cognition it is also known as the mental model fine it, it contains the mental model as a representation of the world fine uh, on the other hand we have the social cognition which consists of the socially shared knowledge the socially shared attitudes and the socially shared ideologies so this is uh, it stores our personal uh, experiences, fine knowledge of the world based on our own personal experiences, subjective experiences, fine. And uh, here are the socially shared uh, knowledge and attitudes and ideologies. So the very first one, the personal cognitive model, uh, mental models are subjective representations, subjective representations of events or situation in episodic memory, fine, or uh, autobiographical memory. Now, if you look at this uh, subjective experience uh, representation, like this is the part of, uh, we have got long-term memory. We have, uh, on the one hand, we have the short-term memory, while uh, on the other hand, we have the long-term memory, like the permanent hard drive of human mind, fine, where since our childhood till right now, all the experiences are saved over there. Fine, they are stored in the long-term memory. Now, long-term memory has got uh, two types. The first one is called the episodic memory, this one. Fine, it stores our personal experiences. On the other hand, we have got the semantic memory. This is what I'm uh, going to discuss later on. Semantic memory, fine. It stores the socially and culturally shared experiences and shared knowledge fine so uh, the mental models are on personal cognition mental models are subjective representations of events and situations now we have since our childhood we have come across so many events uh, and you know numberless 
of situations. We have the knowledge, the personal knowledge, the knowledge which we have gained based on our own personal experiences, fine. We have that subjective experience in our episodic memory. And that subjective knowledge of the world is called our personal cognition, fine. Uh, then we have the uh, social cognition which consists of the socially shared knowledge, attitudes, and ideology. So individuals are social actors. If you look at individuals, they are social actors. They live in society, fine, uh, with other individuals, other human beings, other, so other social actors, and as members of groups, communities, organizations, and institutions. If you look at human beings collectively, so they are the members of groups. Groups can be social groups. They can be, uh, you know, ethnic groups, fine. They can be cultural groups. They can be political groups, like the members of same political party, fine. They can be uh, educational groups. Can be there. Multiple groups are there, fine. Religious groups might be there. They belong to, uh, you know, communities. These social actors, they are, a, they, act as members of communities like uh, Pashtun community, for example, okay, or educated community, now Namlian community, in the same way, organization or institution like we have uh, Namal, for example. So we all are the social actors which belong to that one single organization, fine. So we, were the, we, we are the members of that one single organization, okay? So this is how human beings, they do not live their life individually, rather they, are, they live their life collectively as social beings, fine. And they, they act as members of a group, not individually, rather mem members of a group, fine. So uh, they share knowledge of language and discourse. Like, for example, Pashtun people, they share the same knowledge, the same syntactic structures of the Pashto language, the same phonological structures, the same semantic structures, the same discourse structures, fine. The same uh, like uh, model verbs, okay, all of you know that, uh, which, so what sort of language is formal, which sort of, what sort of language is informal. So we share this knowledge of uh, discourse and language, okay. Then we have the socio-cultural knowledge of the world, fine. Socio-cultural knowledge of the world, uh, means uh, like the entire knowledge of the world, okay? The entire knowledge of the society, of the culture, our social norms and values, fine. Our customs and traditions, our, really, uh, our rituals, our practices, all these are our socio-cultural socio knowledge of the world. Then we have our attitudes, social attitudes, social ideologies, social norms and values, fine. Like, attitudes of a group, for example, one single group. So they have got the same social attitude. They have got the same social ideology, the same social norms and the same social uh, values, fine. Uh, moving further, if you look at social actors, they may also act and communicate as members of social movement and ideological groups, fine. Like uh, social actors, human beings who live in society collectively, they may, act and communicate, fine, as members of social movement or ideological group. For example, if you look at the gender inequalities, for example, feminists, feminist or feminism. Feminism is a social movement, okay? It is uh, the, the, all the people who are feminists, they co combine, they, constitu they constitute an ideological group, fine? In the same way, racism, those people who are anti-racist, they, or they belong to the social movement of uh, anti-racism and they share, share the same, like they're the same ideological group. Same as the case with col colonialism, anti post-colonialism, imperialism, abortion, poverty, terrorism, fine. Poverty, for example, the Marxist, uh, Marxist social movement, okay, or the socialist social movement. So people, human beings uh, in, living in society, they belong to certain ideological groups in certain social movements, even political parties, ideological groups, for example, all the members of PTI, they belong to one single ideological group, okay, or any other political party, fine. So they act and communicate as members of such ideological groups and as members of such social movements, fine. When they do so, like when, when, when they are the part of such ideological groups, so over there they act 
and communicate as members of that group in that movement. Now, what do they do resultantly? They share attitudes about fundamental social issues, okay? They share attitudes about fundamental social issues means, for example, look at all the Marxists, for example, okay, or the so all the socialist community, uh, all the communists, for example, they share the same attitude towards the uh, fundamental social issue that is poverty. Fine, same is the case with terrorism, people who are against terrorism, okay? Gender inequality, look at all feminists, they share their attitude against the very same fundamental issue that is called uh, gender inequality. Same is the case with racism and anti-racism, imperialism, colonialism, for example, look at the uh, uh, people who are against colonialism and imperialism, such as Edward Said, Fine, Homi Kibaba, uh, Michel Foucault, fine. All these people are again such. Uh, now it, it is even uh, Noam Chomsky as well, fine, who has written certain books against the uh, uh, Western, the American hegemony, fine. One of the books I think I have suggested to you as well, uh, Who Rules the World, that is his book, fine. Another book, for example, um, Hegemony of the Survival. Uh, America's quest for dominance. He's writing such sort of book uh, books nowadays. Fine. So, uh, like these people, uh, they uh, people who belong to uh, these social movements, imperialism or colonialism. Nowadays, we have imperialism in vogue because colonialism, uh, the era of colonization is over. Fine. So they belong to this same era, and they all those people like Homi Kibaba, Michel Fou uh, Michel Foucault, okay, uh, Derrida, even uh, Edward Said. Uh, this Noam Chomsky, all of them share the same attitude towards the fundamental social issue, social problem that is imperialism. Okay, so this is how people act and communicate as members of uh, an ideological group or social movement. Now, when they, uh, those social attitudes and those ideologies, such as socialism, feminism, neoliberalism, racism, fine, etc., uh, these these kind of ideologies and attitudes they lead to polarization of people polarization of ideas okay particularly polarization of people polarization means a categorical division fine a categorical division classification into two groups okay so such kind of attitudes lead to polarization between us and them, okay? Or uh, polarization between self and others, okay? Now, what is meant by us and what is meant by other and how do these attitudes lead to these, th th these things? For example, if someone belongs to the, or a group of people, uh, for example, uh, Femin uh, feminist or for example uh, socialists or communists now communists have have got the very same social attitude okay and uh, all of them are concerned with the social problem that that is poverty and uh, marginalization of the poor class people fine so now they polarize the people into two groups okay group one let me find an empty space for uh, drawing lines okay uh, fine this one for example yes okay uh, look at this uh, polarization okay so the communists for them the n group members are simply us on the one hand and on the other hand they have got the them find the others now these us this is called the n group members n group fine and group members while the them for the communists must be their out group members out out group members fine now what is meant by this us and them and group members and our group members to the socialists or to the marxists for example all the people who belong to the socialist social moment fine are all the people who share the very same attitude they are the us for the socialists while all the those people who are against 
these uh, such sort of attitudes they are the others for the communists okay socialists so the people who uh, who are who share the same attitude with them fine they are their n group members while the people who share the opposite attitudes they are the up, uh, out group members fine same is the case with uh, feminism imperialism simply look at the p political parties inside pakistan okay like for all the political members of PTI, for example, all those people who share the same attitude and the same political ideology, okay? For the PTI people, okay, such people are the us, such people are the self, such people are the N-group members. For example, if uh, Mr. A belongs to uh, PTI, so all the people who, who share the very same political ideologies, the very same political attitude, they will be the N group members for Mr. A, okay? On the other hand, if the, all the other people who share the different ideologies, like ideologies uh, in favor of female N or PPP or other political party, so these people, they are the out group members for Mr. A, fine? So this is the concept of us and them, they consider themselves as us, like, uh, to, for example, uh, those people, I'm um, forgetting the names of the members of PTI, the political party, okay. Uh, Firdus Hashikawan, uh, Chudri Fawad, for example, for them, all the members of PTI are the us. They are the self, okay? And all the members of P Million and P, uh, PPP, they are the others for them, the outgroup members. So, during their text and talk, they, during their discourses, they will be supporting their in-group in -group members while they will be resisting and opposing the ideas and talks and discourses of the out-group members, the members of uh, the, you know, the other political parties. Now, let me uh, give you another idea that how do we decide our uh, in-group and out-group members, that who we belong to and who we don't belong to. We ask certain questions from ourselves, okay? Question number four, for example, who we are, who we are and who we are not. Who we are not. Fine. The, the negative of the same question as well. So who we are, for example, we are feminists. So all the people who are feminists are our in-group members. For example, we are the members of PTI. So all the supporters of PTI are, are our in-group members. Now, all those people who are not feminists, I'm just giving examples. Fine, we are not feminists, we are not members of, we are uh, apolitical people. So, uh, all the people who are not feminists, fine, they are our outgroup members. All the people who are not, who do not belong to PTI, they are our outgroup members. Okay, then what we do or what we practice, what we practice, what we don't do, and what we don't practice. So, what we do, we support. But Imran Khan, for example, so all the people who do the same thing, they are our in-group members, they are the us for us, they are the self for us, okay? And all the people who do not support Imran Khan, they are the out-group members politically, they are the others for us, they are the them for us, fine? Now, uh, what do we believe? What are our ideologies? Fine, what do we believe? What do I don't believe? So what do we believe? We believe that all the uh, political ideologies of Imran Khan, they are very much okay, okay? So, uh, all the people who believe the very same thing, fine, they are our in-group members, they are the us for us, okay, they are ourselves, and all the people who oppose the, uh, our ideas, the ideas of Imran Khan, who do not believe in the political ideologies of Imran Khan, they are our, our group members. Now, same is the case with religion as well. What, who we are, we are Muslims. Those who are non-Muslims are our in-group member, out group members. All the Muslims are our in-group members. What do we do? We worship the only Allah, uh, Almighty Allah, fine. We follow the rules and regulations prescribed by the Holy Prophet Wasallam in the Holy Quran, fine. So, uh, all the people who do so, they are our in-group members. On the other hand, the other people are our, our group members, fine. Then, what do we believe? We believe in the oneness of God. We believe in the uh, Holy Prophet Wasallam that he is the last prophet. We believe in uh, the angels, the life hereafter, fine. So uh, all the people who believe 
in such things there are in group members fine we have uh, bismillah rahman rahim amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhiri wal qadri khairihi wa sharri min allah ta'ala wal basibal badal maut so all the people who be, who believe who have got the same belief they are our in group members and all the people who have got different beliefs they are our out group members clear so um, uh, this is what we mean by in group members in our group members now coming to our theory when dykes model of critical discourse analysis the concept of us and them okay uh, those people who are our in group members in our text and talk we tend to support them fine on the other hand those people who do not belong to us who are the out group members we tend to oppose them and resist them okay so this sort of support and resistance these things are highlighted in our discourse it's fine and these this support and resistance can be explored with the help of certain indicators in our speech proposed by Van Dyke. And here are the indicators: actor description, authority, disclaimer, evidentiality, comparison, polarization, euphemism, hyperbole, irony, victimization, generalization, presupposition, vagueness, and hazing. There are more than 35, I think, proposed by Van Dyke. But I have collected only these 11 for 13 for you because they are the most uh, you know, uh, easily identifiable ones. So uh, all these uh, indicators have been explained in the next video. Stay home, stay safe, Allah peace.